here's my latest work. If you have a ProPulse 200, 220, or 300, you will really appreciate this. I made a video manual for the ProPulse 220 MTS going over all the features, broke it all down in like small videos, anywhere between one and four minutes. There's like 20 of them. I'm planning on expanding a couple more. I'll give you a quick uh, view of what this could look like. And then I'll give you the link where you can access the entire playlist. And with that, you can save this to your cell phone. If you're in the shop, you have a question, you can bring up that playlist and just look at a individual video that you need to solve your problem right then and there without having to read the manual. It's all shown, it's all explained. So take a look at it and enjoy. So when you click on the link, it looks something like this. You can pick any video with any topic, just click on it and watch that individual video. Scroll through there to find what you're looking for. Let's start setting the machine up and going from the tank backwards. For welding mild steel, we have a gas mixture here, either a 7525 or a 9010 or a 982, which refers to the argon versus the CO2 content. A 7525, also called C25, has 25% CO2 in the majority balance as argon is 75%. A 9010 has 90% argon, 10% CO2. A 92.8 has 92% argon, 8% CO2. It depends on your local gas distributor if you will be getting 9010 or 928. Some companies make one or not the other. So all these gases will work for regular mild steel welding in short circuit make. For pulse make, you need to have the hotter gas, the 9010 or 928, it doesn't matter which one you have, but you cannot use 7525. First step is open your tank, open your valve all the way till the end. This gauge will show you tank pressure, this one here will show you flow. When you weld mild steel make, you look at the inner scale here that goes from 10 to 60 CFH, that's what I will be referring to as far as numbers. Mild steel, you're typically at 20 CFH, potentially 25 with the door open. When you weld pulse steel, you need to be at about 35 or 40 to have a better gas coverage for the hotter spray arc. On silicon bronze, you want to be at about 40 or 45, 100% argon. On aluminum, you want to be between 40 and 50 100% argon and if you weld gas shielded flux core wire you want to be again between 40 and 50 using 7525 gas. This will work for steel dual shield or stainless dual shield. When you're done at the end of the day it's recommended to dial that regulator all the way back, let the pressure out by pulling the gun trigger one more time to not have load on the diaphragm. If you bought your Propulse 220 MTS or Propulse 200 in 2019 or before, you may have received this style of flow meter. This style flow meter attaches to the tank the same way that the regulator attaches. Um, this gauge will show you tank pressure as you open it all the way up. And you see a little ball flowing in here. The way how this works is the ball will indicate the flow. The only way how you can read flow is if you have the hose in your hand or if you pull the trigger on your MIG gun and actually let the gas flow. Here you see a scale printed on there from 10 to 60 CFH. Again, MIG welding you want to be at about 20 or 25. This would be 20. You're reading the bottom of the ball floating 25. 30 and so on and so forth. You adjust your flow here. In order to maintain flow as your tank pressure drops, it may be necessary to adjust your flow rate as your flow rate may drop slightly. Depending on your temperature and depending on what you did with the gas hose, make sure when you grab the gas hose firmly and twist it, it stays put on the bar like this. If the gas hose will rotate on the bar, the crimp is too loose. If, when the crimp is too loose, you may draw 
you may draw by siphon effect ambient air into the argon, which will contaminate your argon as you're welding aluminum and cause black soot, porosity, unstable arc. So make sure that not only all your screw-on connections on the welding machine and on the flow meter are tight, also make sure that your hose does not rotate on the barbs. So that was the first segment about gases. I'm gonna, I left you the whole first segment in there. I'm going to do a couple clips now. So who could have known it's that complicated and to know that much about gas, but it goes right to the point. No commercials in the entire playlist. No new no me making money off of YouTube, off of you guys. Just straight to the point. I know how valuable your time is. You watch it, you see it. No monetization on those videos. And you can you can hopefully really learn something and help you to dial your machine in a little bit quicker. So I'm going to give you a couple little clips here still, and then um, I'll put the link in the description and in the in the first comment. And good luck to you guys. All right, this one here shows like how to install the wire. It covers the topics of the wire feeder, um, how to put the wire spool in, what the spacer is for, uh, how to set the um, spindle break tension right there so this is going to be something that is often overlooked the brake tension changes between steel and aluminum wire so there are a lot of little things that um, people sometimes don't really catch on to they've been make welding for 20 years but they never really adjusted any of this but granted they never really fed aluminum wire through their machine either so um, there you see the dry folds lined up everything is explained laid out so that could be a good one to watch or um, We'll also get into the, the setup, the software part of the machine in a little bit here. So here we go. Before we do software, there's a, a collection of the guns. The spool gun, the push-pull gun, the different MIG guns, the tick torches, whatever comes available. How you hook them up, what you do with them, what they're there for. So um, that kind of... Uh, could be of any interest to you as well so but like I said you just watch little segments two three minutes no commercials whatever you, whatever you like to see whatever you like to learn that's what you're gonna watch that's what you're gonna pick out of their playlist if you do the whole thing it's about an hour long um, really I don't care if you watch it or not if it helps you do it by all means if it doesn't don't waste your time you know I'm not I'm not making a penny on it either way all the commercials are turned off so do do whatever you want do whatever you like hopefully it helps you somehow so let's talk about settings for stick welding, for TIG welding, for MIG welding, for aluminum, and then even when you go into the submenus, when you get into the start speed, start time, uh, pinch, burn back, uh, I will explain in the videos what it means, what it does, how it does it, and I'm working on a few more videos as far as showing the results on video actually, like as you dial the machine and you, you set the machine what it actually does when you weld what's different so all the explanations are there some of the footage is there some of the footage is not quite there yet but um, I'm working on it so here the stick video is already over there you go those were all the settings and then um, I go into the TIG clip next and then the MIG 40 for aluminum of course because it's the most under most misunderstood program what it does how it does and how it does it and then um, also some remote control functions towards the end, uh, how, how to use your slider, how to use a foot pedal, how to do certain things, and shed some light on that topic. And of course, there's going to be remote controls on the spool guns and push-pull guns as well. So here this video shows how this all works, how this all set up. Here you see a slider, just the Velcro, or in this case electrical tape, to the MIG gun. And it shows how all that works, and then later during that video, it also shows how it works on a spool gun or how it works on a push-pull gun and how to do all these uh, remote control functions. So I hope this helped you a little bit and um, you get some information out of this. Um, this is like your 10 minute teaser here. And um, if you want to see the whole playlist, follow the links, look at it and see um, what you can do. Um, unfortunately, I disabled all the comments in the in the individual videos of the manual it's really like to show you what it is if you have any questions uh, you can always contact HTP if it's something that I can answer maybe put a comment on this video um, if if I get a chance to look at it I'll be happy to to drop a quick line back but um, I really can't monitor or or answer any questions in the comments on that video manual it's just taken it like 10 steps too far so um, well, thanks for watching, and um, I hope this interests you somehow, and um, 
See you later.